In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to draw a simple shape in SketchUp, in particular this stepped block that you see on the screen in front of you. The block is 90 millimeters long, 40 millimeters high, and 35 millimeters thick. And as you can see, the block has a cutout which is 40 millimeters long and 20 millimeters high. I'm going to start with a new drawing. When we start a new drawing, we have the three axes shown. The blue vertical axis, the red horizontal axis here for the width, and the, the green horizontal axis for the depth. Uh, we're going to start, as I start most of my drawings, by clicking on the Rectangle tool. We click that, Pen Changes, and I'm going to start at the origin. Now the one thing before I start, as I draw, I'd like you to watch this Dimensions box because I'm going to click once at the origin and then I'm going to drag. And you can see that I have here a long, narrow rectangle. If you look at the dimensions, you'll see that the first dimension is much larger than the second, 1,284 versus 215. If I go the other way, you'll see that those change around so that the first dimension is much smaller than the second. And those are the actual dimensions of the, uh, the width in this direction versus the depth rectangle that it draws at the beginning is always between the red and the green. It, it may be possible to get a rectangle that's up on the blue by some means, um, but just the simple rectangle that you start with doesn't work that way. So the rectangle I'm going to want is actually going to be 90 millimeters by 35. And the first thing you can see here is that that's really difficult because it's just too small. So I'm just going to click a rectangle. Any rectangle doesn't matter. Second click, I've placed a rectangle. Now before I do anything else, I do not need to move my cursor here and click again. Before I do anything else, I'm simply going to type in the keyboard. I'm going to type 90, 35. You can see it changes there. You, can, you see I need the comma. And you can see that I type the long dimension before I type the short dimension. I'm now going to hit Enter. And there's my rectangle, 90 by 35, and it's tiny. And the reason for this is because we're zoomed a long way out from the origin. If we drew a rectangle all the way out here, it would be a couple of meters big. So this is a few millimeters in either direction. It's small. Now, I'm working on a Windows computer. I have a mouse that has a track wheel. I can zoom in simply by scrolling my track wheel in one direction. I can zoom out by scrolling my track wheel in the other direction. But better than that, I'm going to come over here to the button that says Zoom Extents and I'm going to click. And that's going to get enlarged and zoom right in on my object. I don't want to be here. That's not too close. So I'm going to position my mouse here and I'm going to scroll so that I zoom out. Now note I positioned it here. If I positioned it there, you would see that it actually moved up towards the top left corner. Whereas if I put it in the bottom, it zooms down out, but it keeps the bottom right uh, bottom left corner set up. So the next thing I'm going to do, and it's another tool that's incredibly useful in SketchUp, is I'm going to be using the push-pull tool. So I click on that. What that does is as I hover over a surface, it highlights it. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to pull upwards. And as it pulls upwards, you can see that the distance here says 25. And I can pull it up, and it says 68. I can go to 40 millimeters, and that would be fine. I don't need to do that. All I have to do is start pulling it upright and click. Now my mouse moves off here. Before I do anything else, before I click anything else, I can type 40, which comes up in the measurements box, hit Enter, and it pulls out to 40 millimeters. So by combination of mouse and keyboard, I can get precise measurements. Again, my block is sitting over the edge here, so I can go back and I can hit Zoom Extents. So now I have a block, and this block is 90 millimeters long. I put onto the cursor, 90 millimeters long. It's 40 millimeters high, and it's 35 millimeters thick. What I need to do is the cutout. Now the other thing I can do with my scroll wheel is that if I click it down and then move my mouse, I actually activate my orbit tool by clicking down and I can move my shape around. So I can rearrange it as I want and I can put my shape over here. It might be useful if I was to come around to this corner here and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So the corner that I need to cut out, I'm going to cut out of this corner and it was 40 millimeters from this edge and it was 20 millimeters down from the top. 
one way I can do this is I can use my tape measure tool, another very useful tool. It builds guides in SketchUp, construction lines and technical drawing. And I'm going to click onto the blue line here. And when I pull the guide out, it pulls a line parallel to that blue line. And you can see the red there, which tells me I'm pulling it along the red axis. If I pulled it out in this direction, I'm pulling it along the green axis. If the arrow is gray, it's still parallel to the blue line, but it is somewhere out in between these axes. So I want to pull it out along this blue, uh, red axis. And you can see here, I happen to have got it on 40 millimeters, which is what I want. I could just pull it part way and type again. But if I were to pull to 40 millimeters, I can click and I place a guideline down. I need another guideline. I need one parallel to this surface here. So I'm going to click on this edge. I'm going to pull it down and I can type in 20 millimeters if I want. But 20 millimeters is half of the total height. And so this line here actually has a center line. You can see that little blue dot next to the tape measure. That's the center point of that vertical line. And it says 20 for 20 millimeters. So I'm going to click. I now have guides that position my cutout. The easiest way for me to do this is I can use a rectangle tool and I can go from any intersection of any two lines and I can pull this up to do that and it draws a line. The alternative, I've pressed escape to get rid of that. I can come over here to my pencil tool. I can start on my intersection between the vertical line of the block and the guide. I can click and release. It will then pull a line to wherever I go. I'm going to hover over and you can see I have an intersection between the two guidelines. I can click and I can release. And because it hasn't completed a shape or a surface, I'm still drawing a line. And so I come up to the intersection between the guide and the line and I click and release and I have a shape here. And I can take the push pull tool and I can push it and it will push until it is completely gone and that is my shape. Now I'm going to undo that and in fact I'm going to undo the two lines because there are other ways I could do this. I could use my guideline uh, parallel to this edge and I could move along to here and I could click and I could draw a line from intersection to intersection and I could pull it down as far as this line. It snaps to line. All right. I'm going to hit undo. I could pull it down a little bit and type 20 and hit enter and it pulls down the correct distance. So I'm going to hit undo. The other thing I can do, and I can do it from entirely the other direction, I'm going to hit undo again. I'm going to take out this line here. I'm going to go back to my line tool and I'm going to start at this intersection point here and this time I'm going to move across. Now see that I'm pulling across on a green line. So that tells me I'm drawing a line parallel to the green axis, which is what I want. And you'll see it actually also snaps midpoint to midpoint. Convenient because I'm doing 20 millimeters, but if that dimension wasn't from the, mid, the uh, midpoint on both sides, it would still be the green line. And I can click again. I have a line in place. I can now take my push-pull tool and I can push it that way and I need to push it 40 millimeters. That's all these ways of drawing the shape. Now I can do it again a slightly different way. So I'm going to hit undo a very variety of times, take away the construction lines, take away the push-pull. And I'm going to start here with again just this basic rectangle which is the first one that I drew. I'm going to start with my push-pull tool again and I'm going to bring it up 20 millimeters. Now I'm going to draw my construction line here. From here I'm going to go out parallel to the red axis. I'm sorry. Yep, in the direction of the red axis. My, my dimension line is parallel to the red axis so my guideline will be perpendicular. And I type in 40. I hit enter. I draw a line from one intersection to the other. Now, this time, instead of cutting uh, material away from the block, what I need to do is pull it up by 20 millimeters. And that again is my shape. Now, the difference from what I've done here is the first techniques I showed you are very much like woodwork or for CNC milling. I start with a big block and I cut material away. 
this one, what I'm doing is more like 3D printing, where I build the whole block up to this level, and then once I get to this level, I only build this part of the block up to the second level. Now the last thing that's useful is to be able to get rid of the guides. Now any line can be removed by using the eraser tool and I can come here and I can erase it. The alternative if I'd had a number of guidelines in place and I might have had um, I might have had all these guidelines in various places to help me along is that I can go to the edit menu and I can hit delete guides. Now unfortunately there is no simple single button that you can press to do that. You have to do it via the edit menu. Everything else you can do by these toolbars at the side or above. Now those are the very basics to creating a shape. Most of the drawings I do will start with a rectangle at the origin most of my drawings the rectangle is very small and I need to use the zoom extends tool. I use the push pull tool extensively to pull my 3D shapes out. I will use guides or construction lines to determine where I'm going to draw lines or rectangles that I then push pull from other rectangles. And if you can do this you can do just about any simple shape that uses standard rectangular corners uh, without a huge amount of effort. It's just a little bit of thought about where to put your guides so that you get the right intersections and thereafter it's mostly just a matter of drawing a rectangle or a line and using the push-pull tool. That's about as complicated as these shapes get, initially at least. Thank you.